Why do we pray? Three reasons why we pray. Number one, prayer is a declaration of a sovereign authority who has the power to attend to our needs. Prayer is a declaration of a sovereign authority who has the power to attend to our needs. Praying is simply saying there is an authority up here that is sovereign and has the power to intervene in human affairs. Amen. Praying is letting your needs, your challenges know that you have a higher authority, a reference point that has the power to sort out what seems impossible. Prayer is an advantage we have in the earthly realm over the affairs of life because we have a God that is above every challenge. Prayer is an expression of our faith to a sovereign God. So praying is simply saying, there is a God, you are aware of that God, and you have faith in that God, and therefore you are not a subject of your challenges. Prayer is expressing our conviction on the promises of God above our challenges. Prayer is letting your circumstances know that you are not totally dependent on you. There is a higher authority. Praying is saying there is a God and I know him. He is a way maker. He is a promise keeper. He is a light in the darkness. And I am aware of it. Prayer is expressing your knowledge of God. It's expressing your conviction of God. Is expressing your faith in God. Prayer is despising your challenges. Prayer is looking at your challenges and look up to solutions. There is a scripture that portrays prayer unless understood from a position of desperation. James chapter 5 verses 13. James chapter 5. Verses 13. If you look at that scripture, it may look like you are expressing desperation. It says, is any among you afflicted, heal treated, suffering evil, he should pray. Amen. Now listen, that prayer, that scripture is not an aspect of desperation. It is not an expression of our desperation. It is a, an expression of our conviction. You look at afflictions and refuse to entertain that condition and introduce your God to you the affliction. Prayer is living above the storms of life. Prayer 
is taking the wings of grace when the storms of life comes. Prayer is taking the life jacket when you seem to be sinking. Prayer is taking an umbrella when the rain shows up. Prayer is running with grace when you have lost your strength. Prayer is saying there is a God and this is not my settled position. What is prayer? Prayer is simply introducing your God to your situation. Listen, nothing is impossible. Nothing is beyond solution to those who know how to pray. Is anyone among you afflicted? What do you do? Come on, let's say it together. Is any of you among you afflicted? What do you do? Pray. What does that mean? Never consider a challenge as an end in itself. Three things I want you to consider in prayer. Praying is simply saying there is a solution. Simple. Praying is simply saying there is a solution. So anything you can pray for is simply saying there is a solution for it. And this week, there is a solution. If there is any infliction in your family, I'm glad I woke up this morning in my house and all my children said they were not eating breakfast and they were not eating lunch because they heard the pastor announcing there is fasting. Prayer is acknowledging that there is a solution. There is no impossibility where people can pray. I say there is no impossibility where people can pray. If there is one thing the enemy would want out of you, is to shut your prayer life. Because when you shut your prayer life, it simply means you have accepted your condition. You have succumbed to your challenge. You have accepted the storms. You have given up to the enemy. You have surrendered to your challenge. Is any of you afflicted? Affliction comes in diverse manners. It could be affliction in your finances. It could be affliction in your family. It could be affliction in your health. If there is affliction, James is saying there is a solution. Pray. If you can be able to pray for it, you don't need to worry about it. We can only worry over what we can pray. The Bible says when Jesus was in affliction, he prayed to God who had the power to save him. Ladies and gentlemen, number two, we activate the power of God through prayer. We activate the power of God through prayer. He wills to do. He desires to do. He wants to do. He loves us so much that he would want to do. But we invite him by prayer. The power of God is activated through prayer. Listen, no matter what you go through, if you keep on praying, God will be on board. The power of God is activated through prayer. Number three, God is invited by prayer. God is not an intruder. Mungu haingili mambo ya watu. Pila mwaliko. Anasemaje? Nasimama mlangoni na pisha. Mtu yoyote akisikia sauti yangu nawe na heri ya kufungua. Nitaingia. Na usipofungua, sitafunja mlango ya kwako. Watu wa Mungu eh? Alika Mungu kwa hali. Hakuna kitu kikumu ambacho Mungu hawezi kuishukulikia. Na nitasema kwa Kiswahili wale mnasikia Kiingereza mtatusamea kidogo. Sikia. 
Mungu akialikwa suluhu imealikwa Listen friends you don't need God to send a messenger invite him Prayer is a personal invitation to God why should you look for help from a brother, a sister, an uncle? Why should you make a phone call when you can invite God personally? The invitation card, the SMS, the message you would send is pray. What a friend we have in Jesus. Give me those words. is a personal invitation to God. Now listen friends, among the few words the Bible prescribes for our daily survival is pray without ceasing. You know what he's saying? Have God on board every day. Ladies and gentlemen, when you invite God, you can sleep. When you invite God, you don't need to fight the devil. When you invite God, you don't need to worry. When you invite God, you don't need to be scared. Pray. I say pray. Church, I say pray. Now listen, this is the equalizer. You don't need to go to school to pray. You don't need to be married to pray. You don't need to have money to pray. You don't need to be old to pray. You don't need English to pray. Just open your mouth and say, God! What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege that we can carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we have then for faith. Oh, what needless. We always have this because we do not. What do we carry? Everything. Now listen to this friend. He said these words. Do you have trials and temptations? Come on, come with me. What is he saying? Is there any trouble anywhere? What should be our response? We should never be discouraged. Everybody say you take it to the Lord. Why? Why should we take it to prayer? Can't we find a friend that is so faithful who with all our sorrow share? Oh, What do you do? Just take it to the Lord. Now, those of you who think you have no strength, you've gone through too much, you think your life has come to an end, there is a solution for you. Are we weak and heavy laden, compared? With how many cares? There is a promise here. Our precious Savior is still our refuge. Just take it to the Lord in prayer. And do thy friends despise and forsake. How many of you have been despised and forsaken by people you thought were your friends? It says when you get to that end, just take it 
to the Lord in prayer. Why? Because in his arms, he will take you and shield thee and thou will find. Let's read together this one. Ah, we weak. Sorry. Everybody say. Solution, brother, take it. Why do we fast then? Matthew chapter five. Verse 6. Just give me one minute and I will release you. Why do we pray? I've explained. Why do we fast? Matthew 5, 6. Blessed, fortunate, and happy, and spiritually prosperous. In that state which the born again child of God enjoys his favor and salvation are who are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness stop right there why do we fast fasting is not afflicting ourselves to make God intervene fasting is an expression of our hunger for God Fasting is expressing your hunger, your passion, your desire. How bad do you want it? You are denying your current status comfort. You are telling yourself, I am broke. I'm struggling. My parents are struggling. My life is not going anywhere. I will not sit here and comfort myself. I will deny my current state comfort. I will refuse to settle where I am. I refuse to be comfortable. So I will express my desire for change by denying my current status comfort. I will fast. I will not be eating in struggle. So I deny my current condition comfort because I hunger for God. Now, carry this too as you go away. Anything you deny yourself for the sake of God quickens the love of God towards you. Fasting is telling God, I deny myself comfort. I refuse to feed my appetites. I refuse to work like nothing is working. I mean like nothing is happening because I am hungry to meet you. Number two, Fasting is telling God, you are my priority. Fasting is telling God, you are my priority. You tell your food. And listen, fasting is not only abstaining from food. Fasting is abstaining from anything that gives comfort to your flesh. Some of you need to fast by switching off your phone. And tell everybody, I have tried talking to you forever. You have only received bad news. Let me give a chance to God. Fasting is to tell some of your movies, I'm not watching you. Fasting is to tell some of your comfort, I'm not having you this week. What is fasting? Giving God a priority. So what are we doing this week? We are praying and fasting. We are acknowledging there is a God. There is a solution. There is a supreme authority. 
There is an answer to this issue. We can move from where we are. We can break chains. We can move to the next level. There is a God who is willing. We are inviting God. We are incorporating God. But we are saying an extra point. We are not only inviting God. We are inviting God with passion. Amen. We want it. Amen. We are not saying, Lord, if you want to. We are saying, Lord, you do it. So I want you to do this for me. We have a box here. If you have any prayer issue concerning your family, concerning your life, if there is any affliction anywhere, we have agreed to fast with you. The Bible says when two, if two, which is means subject to us, if two of us agree here on earth, pertaining anything, anything. Now listen, listen. It is you who determine how far you think God can go. Some of you think you are some of the sickness that can't be healed. Listen, it's a lie. The God who heals malaria can heal HIV. God can heal cancer. God can heal poverty. And remember, poverty is a sickness. Anything that takes away your joy and comfort is an enemy. You don't need cancer to suffer. Poverty is enough. If the landlord has to lock your house, Listen, friends, I've slept outside with my things. My landlord just came and threw them away. But that was not bad enough. I've had a landlord come, skimmed when I was inside the house. And he locked the door from outside. Do you need cancer to be in pain? If you can't pay school fees for your children. If you can't take your mama to hospital. If you can't buy a new dress when you want. Can I tell you something? Unless it's not the God I'm talking about. The one I'm talking about is a healer. Amen. And he didn't say I will heal some. I will not heal some. If you are HIV positive. If you are suspecting cancer. If you think there is a curse following you. If you think somebody spoke something stupid about you. There is a God. Amen. He did not leave us without solutions. Ask me, there is a God. He's not far. Just invite him. Instead of talking about your problem, talk to God. Amen. Tell Lord, I am in distress. I am not desperate on my situation. There is a God. A man was told by a prophet, you will die. Put your house in place. Order. You know what he did? He despised the prophet. And turn to the wall and say, God! Listen. I don't care what they have said. Take it to the Lord. And pray. So, I want to give you the picture of what we will do. Those of us who are working and you can't, because you are traveling and you can't fast fully. I want you to just take one meal. Or just take snacks. Or just take a drink. Those of us who can fast fully. Fast with us. For the next seven days. Those of us who can fast partially, at least everybody should fast. Skip a meal, deny yourself something. Are you inflicting yourself? No, you're expressing your hunger. Amen. Why should I be comforted in pain? If it is a family issue, if it's a private issue, 